Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. So again, I have my floor background now uh, in the back of me. So welcome back to a new lecture on flow in aquifers. And in this lecture, we are looking at what a table aquifers, so unconfined aquifers. Again, last time I did the uh, basic derivation with a confined aquifer. And now we're moving on, we're graduating to a confined case, to an unconfined case, excuse me, bloops. Okay, so again, we start with our basic definition of flow, right? What is a discharge? It is, again, the Darcy flux times the area. But now the area, remember last time, because B was constant for a confine, you know, the area was not a problem. Now, the area of the aquifer, again, the area is the depth of the aquifer times the width, right? But then now the depth of the aquifer is variable because now it's, it's a water table aquifer, right? So it's not constant. Like the water table actually moves up and down and it can be deeper somewhere and, and shorter somewhere. So the head gradients will change and the head itself changes so the area itself is a variable so what uh, how do we deal with this situation right so you can see here that the head is different here and here right so the depth is different so the area is different uh, so this is a whole new ball game here well uh, let's start with an example right so if I take a, a simple example then uh, maybe we can work through the example and sort of derive the equations with a more intuitive understanding of what those equations are uh, telling us. Okay, so a river and a canal are located 500 meters apart and intersect an aquifer with hydraulic conductivity K, 0 0.03 meters per day. The numerical values for H1 are five meters, so five meters here, and the difference between H1 and H2 is 1.25 meters. So that means this is 3.75 meters, and this is five meters. So obviously we know that we'll have, because the head is higher right here than there, we know that we're going to get some flow right from the river to the canal. Uh, the questions are find the value of the head at the midpoint, so right here, uh, between river and canal and the groundwater discharge per kilometer of aquifer. So remember that uh, Q prime and sorry for that blurry look sometimes. Okay, uh, so Q prime. Right, that's the question. What is the discharge per kilometer of river into the river uh, on the right hand side or into the canal, I guess? Okay, uh, so let's start, right? So we know what Q prime is. Q prime is Q over W as before, uh, but now again, the problem, so Q over W is KH. Notice that now we have H here instead of B before, right? Because now it's not a constant, again, it's, it's the same variable as this one, so now we have an issue where we're going to carry this through the integrations and the derivations, and, you know, in the calculus, it's not a constant anymore, so we have to deal with it. Um, the first question, right, if there is no recharge, so again, we'll deal with recharge in the next uh, video, which is when there is rain, and we have to deal with boundaries here that gives us rain, but for now, we assume there's no recharge, no nothing, so we're happy with that. So if there is no recharge and everything is steady, right, there's no change in time, then the amount of water leaving the canal and entering the aquifer at x equals zero, so assuming this is a canal and this is a river, um, so the amount of water, right, coming from the canal into the aquifer and out of the aquifer into the river should be the same, right? There's continuity. There's the same amount of water going in and out if everything is steady and there's no uh, input of water, you know, on the way there. So everything, you know, by continuity, if you push one cubic meters per second or one cubic meter, right, into that uh, aquifer, by continuity, you need to push out one cubic meter of stuff, right? That's just continuity, mass balance, right? Water balance. Now, that means that dq prime dx, right, equals zero. So that means, right, that's exactly the definition of that. That means the change of q prime as a function of distance is zero, there's no change, there's no recharge, there's nothing changes, everything is the same. Okay, well now we can write this because now we have an equation for Q prime and we know that the first derivative in space is zero, so let's try and find what that means. Okay, so again, this is the same statement here. So the derivative is zero, so now we can put, you know, the value of Q prime into that DDX, right? So DDX Q prime equals zero. 
Now, by the chain rule, so this is just a little uh, aside, mathematical aside, right? But the chain rule says that h dh dx is the same as half dh squared dx. Okay, now, if you don't believe me, you can just apply the chain rule or, you know, Google it. You can rederive this. I'm not taking the time here, but this is true. This is just mathematically true, okay? So now, if we replace h dh dx, right, in our q prime or here, h dh dx, if you will replace it by that half dh squared dx, right? So here is the original, here is the replaced version, right? So we just replace that thing by half d squared uh, h squared dx squared, right? Again, so now we have d dx times dh squared dx, that gives us the d squared h squared dx squared, and then k over two is a constant, so we leave it out, right? So the k comes from here and the two comes from here. Okay, so now we have an expression. Now we have an expression right here uh, that tells us that k over 2 second derivative of h squared is 0. So notice now that h squared is our variable, right? So again, this is not a square in the, in the differential. This is the actual h squared. So now we have a variable that instead of being just the head, is the head squared, okay? So this is really important because that's where that parabolic profile that I've showed you before for the inconfinery, the fact that h is variable, you can already sense that the solution is going to be in h squared, not in h, and of course a square is like a parabolic sort of a profile, right? So we already know that the water table profile is going to be some sort of a parabolic profile. Now we do the same trick, right? We separate the variables and, you know, we carry the calculations, we solve, and we end up with, so if we um, separate the variables, right? So obviously the integral of zero is just a constant. Integral of d squared h squared uh, ddx h squared is going to be h squared. Um, so, so this is dx, right? There you go. So if we integrate those two things, right? The integral of d h squared is just h squared, the variable. C1 dx is C1x and there's a, a uh, constant of integration, right? So it's exactly the same as we did last time, except now the variable is h squared instead of h. And finally, we can do the same tricks as before, right? We have that expression for h squared. So h squared itself is a linear function of x. Uh, but before we had an, a linear function of x for h instead of h squared, right? So we find the constants by plugging in the boundary condition. So exactly the same process as the last lecture for the confined aquifer. Um, so if h is h1 as h at x equals 0, that means that c2 equals h1 squared. Uh, if h equals hl at x equals l, so in this case that would be h2, right? hl or h2, so h at l, right? So this is this number here. Uh, then that gives us, you know, the second, um, uh, the second constant or c1, what we call c1 is this business here. And then we can plug that back in everything and we have in the end an expression for h of x, right? So now we have the head along the x-axis here, right? Is this expression, so it's the square root of the square of the boundary divided by l times x plus h1 squared. So again, notice how we have the squares carried uh, everywhere. And the profile is going to be some kind of a parabolic profile, right? It's in h squared, or it's the square root of, of x, if you will. Okay, and now if we, to answer the original question, right, uh, what is the head at the midpoint? So remember the question was, what is the head at the midpoint? So we can, you know, plug in the numbers. We have five and 3.75 are the head H1 and H2. So we replace it in this ex expression here. So five, 3.75, L is 500 meters. So L over two divided by L. Uh, and then we plug everything in and we find 4.42, okay? So the head in the, at the midpoint is 4.42 uh, meters. Now, a quick note here, right? If I use my linear approximation, so the confined aquifer results from last lecture, and I replace, so the, I'm looking at the head at the midpoint. So if it was linear, right, it would be just, you know, five minus half the difference, right, between the two points, which if you look at what that is, that 4.375 meters compared to 442 when we do the whole, you know, square business and derivation. So you notice that it's not a huge difference, right? Uh, so in a lot of cases, in a lot of practical cases, even for unconfined aquifers, we take that linear assumption or that linear approximation and say this is good enough, right? So again, mathematically, it's not quite 
uh, correct. It's not you know strictly correct, but if you look at the difference, the practical difference here, we're looking at you know four or five centimeters out of you know four point four meters. So it's not a big big difference. So depending on the cases, it may or may not be important. But it, I'm just saying that oftentimes we actually use the linear approximation instead of the uh, parabolic profile. Oh yeah, H max. S excuse me. Uh, what is the maximum head? So we can calculate the maximum head by setting dh dx equals zero, right? Which is true here for x equals zero. So notice that h max here, and sorry, this is an aside because this will change in the next lecture when we uh, look at recharge. So when there's rain or when there is recharge, when there is input of, um, of rain you know, on the way, then things are different. But in this case, right, uh, the maximum head, so dh dx equals zero, the maximum head is actually at the input, right? This is the maximum. And from here, it goes down, okay? So there's not a bump in the middle like the uh, previous graph here um, suggests, right? This is actually wrong. We're actually going down, you know, from H1 to H2. So the maximum, again, is that X equals zero is right here. This is the maximum, okay? Sorry, so now we can move on to uh, calculating the discharge uh, per kilometer of aquifer into the river. And again, the discharge is Q prime, right? Or the normalized discharge, so per kilometer of river. Uh, is KH dH dx, which reduces to uh, KH squared minus H2 squared divided by 2L. And this is the Dupuis equation, so really important. Uh, and I didn't put a little picture here, but again, this is the same as, so he literally did his studies with um, Darcy, right? So uh, early 19th century at Polytechnique, uh, same advisor. So this is all, you know, all those concepts are uh, out of that same, you know, uh, time frame and uh, also, you know, in space, like in, in Western uh, Europe, France. Uh, okay, so if we plug in the numbers into our uh, Dupuis equation here, again, the, uh, remember that H dH dx, right, is the same as that uh, H squared over 2 uh, dx, and so if dx equals L, right, and then so this H squared we know, K, so now we know everything, right? So we just plug in the numbers and find that uh, the discharge is 0.3 cubic meters per day per kilometer of river, right? So it's only 300 liters per day per kilometer uh, of aquifer. So not very much, obviously. I mean, those numbers may not all make sense, but this is what it is. Also notice that the, uh, the head here, uh, excuse me, I'm looking for my equations. The head here does not depend on K, right? Notice that uh, the hydraulic conductivity of the media really doesn't influence, you know, where that head is. So it's all, you know, pressure driven. It's all head driven. It doesn't really matter if we, ha if we have sand, clay, you know, anything. It's just a question of, um, it's just a question of head differences. And here again, now here for the flow, you do have K, right, influencing. So it, now for the flow, we need the hydraulic conductivity. How much flow is the media uh, letting through? Okay, I think this is enough for today. I'm sorry this is a little longer uh, video, but this is really you know, important concepts and we're touching on to the more advanced, I guess, uh, concepts for this uh, first class on groundwater cycle and understanding those equations and their derivations. So next time we'll review again, so we'll do the same process we did for confined and unconfined, but now we'll add rain. So what happens when there is rain on that field, right? On that water table aquifer. Okay, this is the object of next week's or the next lecture. Thank you.